Welcome to How to Rock the Stage Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montrager interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Montrager. Well, thank you, Dan. Welcome back, everyone. Once again, you're back for Rock the Stage, and we have an amazing guest, guest once again, and we're going to get into the power of storytelling. Now, we all love a good story. We all lo love a great movie. We all got, love a, a good yarn, but they're not just stories. They're stories for your business. They're stories to help you captivate your best client, to lure them in better. And of course, there's always a good adventure when you get into storytelling. We're going to get into that here today. So don't go anywhere for Rock the Stage. We do want to thank our sponsor, though, Autovita Studios. Autovita Studios has been helping and supporting the Rock the Stage with their amazing team. They help you produce and create your audio podcasts, your uh, audio books, and then they help you drive it to the market and grow and reach your audience, connecting your voice to the world. That's the promise of Autovita Studios. Learn more at autovitastudios.com. That's autovita.com. And we do want to thank our newest sponsor coming on board, Suspiciously Convenient Productions. Learn more about them by Googling them and if you have a media project, if you have a TV show you want to launch, if you have a movie production, they're the company you want to get to know. Thanks for again to Suspiciously Convenient Productions for being a part of Rock the Stage. All right. The advertisements are out of the way. The fun is about ready to begin because we are going to go sailing today. Yes, we are. Say it, share it, and sell it with storytelling. And today's guest has sailed thousands of miles in search of stories. And he's found that. Today, as a business storytelling expert, he helps professionals, visionaries, and forward-thinking companies turn their messes into messages. Yes, I said that right, by the way. Please welcome speaker, author, and pretty good jazz guitarist, Dave Bricker, to Rock the Stage. Dave, great to see you again. Hey, Rich. Good to see you, too. Pleasure to be here. I just noticed my collar is not doing well. Did you do ever have that happen when you get on camera? A uh, bad collar day is the least of my worries. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dave, it's been a while since you've been on, but you have been a storyteller. That's what you do best. And for those that don't know much about your backstory, what, first of all, got you into this storytelling, and especially for business? Well, that's a, that's a big question. But storytelling, I guess I've always been fascinated by stories. And when I was 18 years old, had recently finished my first year of college, I met these crazy people who lived on sailboats. And they didn't have any money. Their boats weren't fancy. But these people traveled all over the world. I had a friend who'd say, I'm going to North Carolina tomorrow. And off he'd go into the Gulf Stream like someone else would go to the store for a glass of milk. And I thought, you mean you can have real adventures? You don't have to crack open a book or go to a movie theater? Like, you just go out and have adventures? And I said, I want me some of that. So I, I uh, dragged myself kicking and screaming through finishing college. And uh, by the time I had graduated, I was living on board a 26-foot sailboat that I bought for $3,000 and started fixing up. And... Uh, <laughs> After I graduated, it was another six months, and I took off with 30 or $40 in my pocket and a locker full of food and dreams and uh, ended up doing many thousands of miles of sailing in certain well, stories. Bahamas, that's not a bad way to start off, right? Come on, let's, let's all hop in Dave's boat and let's go to Bahamas. But you've also been around to Chesapeake Bay, up in my neck of the woods in the D.C. area. Uh, you've been to Gibraltar. Mm-hmm. You're out there alone on your ship doing this, or do you have a crew or friends hanging out with you? How, well, how, how, how much of this is Dave on his own doing this? Most of the Bahamas stuff was solo. Now, again, I wasn't alone in the middle of the wilderness, at least not all the time. Now, this isn't the Bahamas that many people think of, which is Nassau and Freeport and casinos and all of that. This is Bahamas has, I think, 700 islands in it. And there are a lot of wonderful remote places where you can walk for miles on a beach by yourself. And yours are the only footprints. 
So that's a, a pretty amazing experience. When I crossed the Atlantic in 91, I went on a friend's boat. It was a wooden boat that he had built, which sounds really like, oh, what did he hammer something together in his garage? But no, he was a he was a German carpenter, you know, live to work and work to live and went into the jungles in Belize and chopped down the trees to build the boat. Fanatic. This boat was a sailing cuckoo clock. It was beautiful. But uh, I went with, with him and his daughter. And then when I went up to Chesapeake Bay, most of that trip uh, was with a friend of mine and then he could only stay a certain amount of time. So I ended up the inland waterway part doing on my own. So it was a mix. But, but 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 this all goes back to those original people that you met hanging on, going on their adventures. You heard amazing global stories. And did you ever get seasick, by the way, with all this traveling? Did, 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 did you ever lose it? That's I have. <laughs> I won't go into the graphic details, but yes, I have been seasick for days and at a time. And it's just one of those things that you have to deal with. And. Well, but though, that's where stories begin. And I've, I've, I've always told people, you have to go live. I mean, I, I like hiking, camping. I like adventure myself. And there's something about being in those. And then afterwards, you reflect back and like, oh, that's a great story. I should share that. Is that kind of how it works for you? Living helps you be a better storyteller? Oh, I think so. Look, nobody ever had an adventure where everything went right. That's just boring. <laughs> so, yeah, if if you're not at least a little bit scared, you're probably not living your life hard enough. Well, and you you now have tagged yourself as story sailing. So you've taken your sailing adventures and you definitely have molded them into your craft of helping business leaders and people. But what is story sailing? So story sailing in its pure form is a model that I use to teach sailing. It's four elements and a golden rule, and we can go into that or not as we have time. But more important, I think, is that sailing makes a wonderful metaphor for business. And I'll give you a, a few quick examples. Uh, if you are a sailor who's had any experience, you've run aground a time or two. You're sailing along and all of a sudden, and you're stuck. Now, you've got a couple of choices. What a lot of people do is they freak out, they call the tow boat, they fire up the motor, they do everything they can, but there's something to be said for waiting for the tide. Now, I've spent a couple of uncomfortable nights sleeping on the wall of the boat. The tide goes out. I'm sleeping on the wall. It comes back up and I float off. So I think that's a great metaphor for business right there because sometimes you can spend a lot of energy get nowhere but if you just wait for the tide to change if you wait for the economy if you wait for your competitors to do something stupid if you just accept running aground as a part of life and business then the tide's going to come and float you off sooner or later well um, and, and storytelling in business has been around for a long time but having worked with businesses trying to help them understand it I want your insight. Why don't they get it? Why don't they understand the power of story and selling, of branding, of hooking the people? I mean, they just seem to hear it, but because they don't get it. Well, there are a couple of very natural mistakes that people make in their messaging. And one of them is to talk about themselves. Well, I need people to know about me and my products. I want to get hired, so I need to talk about me. And I always advise people, get rid of your eye infection. It's not about I do this and I do that. It's all about the people you serve. And if you can offer that value up front, I mean, uh, if I'm giving a workshop, I always ask the ladies, how many of you have been out with that guy who talks about himself the whole night? And you're just waiting for your girlfriend to call you with the phony emergency so you can excuse yourself from that first date. And they're all nodding their heads because, okay, some guy's trying to impress their date. That's natural, but we impress people by listening to them and understanding who they are and what they need, not by rambling about ourselves. That's just one big messaging uh, mistake that people make. And the other one is 
people, and this is classic, people talk about the features and not the benefits. They talk about how many BTUs, how many square feet, how many horsepower, uh, and they give lots of statistics and data. And you know what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares at all about that. People don't even care about the price. If if I told you <laughs> I could I could make you a, a million dollars tomorrow and it was only going to cost you nine hundred and ninety nine nine ninety nine, <laughs> okay, let's do it. It's a free dollar, right? I, I mean, uh, uh, we have a colleague in NSA, Joel Block. He's got a wonderful mm -hmm. quote: "Broke people make bail every day." <laughs> and I wish I'd come up with that one. But if you offer that value, uh, then price doesn't matter. People care. Stories are always about people. Golden rule of storytelling. Stories are always about people. If you're not talking about people, you're not telling stories. If you're well, not telling stories, you're not connecting. And if you're not connecting, you're not selling. To really come alive, what else do you need to be a, a great storyteller that is going to hook business people to pay attention and buy from you? Well, you need, first of all, let's let's backtrack one step and talk about this, I, this word buy. Because it, the connotation is that people are going to spend money when they buy, that there's a commercial transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if we are speakers or experts or authors, people need to buy our credibility. They need to buy that we are a trustworthy source of information. So there are different kinds of buying that happen. And some people are more money driven than other people, but we all want to deal with people we know, like, and trust. And that is a form of buying that's very important. The, the actual money transaction, I like to say the transaction comes after the sale. <laughs> if someone hasn't bought who you are and what you have to offer and the idea that there's value there, they haven't offered you money yet. And if they haven't offered you money yet, you're not finished selling. Well, okay. So now back to your earlier point. How do you do that without doing I, 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 and pat yourself on the back? How do you get them to know, like, and trust you without bragging about you? Well, Vote yourself off the island, explore the world in a U-boat. You talk about them and their story, and you let them know that you understand what they need and what they're looking for. For example, I have a story that I begin with my, my keynote with, and I talk about being out at sea in a small boat and dodging some ships at night, and they can't see me, and it's cold, and it's nasty out, and I'm Anyway, I won't do the whole story, but not too long into that story, before people start thinking, why is this guy up there talking about himself? I say, have you ever felt like that in your business? Like you're out there in these big seas, these massive opportunities are coming by and they need what you have to offer and they can't see you. They could run you over and not even know it. How are you going to get their attention? Now, instead of me telling my boating story, I'm telling a story that is a metaphor for the journey that everybody in the room is on. That's, you flip the script, you tell your story about your audience, about your prospect. So is it okay to embellish your story? Because I've heard people say, you can't over embellish, Rich, you're a storyteller, but sometimes you make up crap. Is it okay to make stuff up to embellish for the right reason? I don't think anybody's accusing J.K. Rowling uh, of making stuff up, right? Or Dan Brown. Uh, but the point is to serve the audience. Now, in my, I, I have a sailing story in my sailing memoir where I go through the islands of the northern Bahamas, the Abacos, one by one. And I take you to this island and I describe what it's like and I take you to the next one. The reality, I did that on about five different sailing trips. But why would I make my reader go through all of that anchoring? All I'm doing is diluting their experience. Do they really care if I'm honoring the historical record? It's not an autobiography where I have to 
delineate every fact. It's a memoir. Let me take my reader on a journey. Let me take the people in the audience on a journey. And if they say, wow, were you really alone when you did that sailing crossing with the cruise ships? Like, well, no, actually, I, I had a lady friend, <laughs> friend with me and she was pretty scared, but it doesn't help the story. I'm, I'm, I'm not there to document the facts. I'm there to make the audience think, feel, and experience something new. So how do business leaders marketing ceos how do, because honestly I've, I've heard a lot of ceos get on stage they're not great storytellers so dave what can we do to help them become better sailing storytellers how can we help them here today <laughs> well look there's i i think of storytelling as having three elements one is what to say and for those leaders who are not great writers or messengers that get some help writing the words because if you just sit down and you you have not studied uh, persuasive or engaging writing. It's a wonderful journey to be on, but it's not for everybody. Then you hire a speechwriter. Number two is we've got what to say. Then there's how to say it. And you and I are speakers. We're members of National Speakers Association. We study that art of oratory. And there are these times where we're speeding up and our pitch is going higher because we want to convey that we're freaking out. Yep. And then there are times when we slow things down and we pause and we lower our volume and understanding how to use our dynamics. Anybody can learn that, but it requires training. It's not natural. And yet so many speakers use their FM radio DJ voice all the time. They never slow down. They never speed up. They never change their, tone, their volume, their intensity. And after a while, the audience is hearing, oh, 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 oh. It's like yeah. the old Charlie Brown cartoons. Yes. And, and then the third one is why they'll buy it. Again, buying doesn't necessarily mean why they'll spend money on it, but why will they buy your message? Why are they going to say, I really like what Rich had to say. And because of that, I'm going to change my work habits or hire a coach or invest in this or that uh, resource. It's, you know, I like to say lecturers give information, speakers deliver transformation. And so stories. let me go there because one of the worst things I hear is, high level companies talking about their products or services and they say let me show you the numbers and they start talking about the numbers and the data the number and the data yes we want some facts but people without a story that go with the data no one really cares am i correct on that or am i out to lunch on that well just just look at politics today i mean how many people are interested in facts don't bother <laughs> me with facts i've got my mind made up it's, it's that, you know, why should I try it if I already know I don't like it mentality? And I, I, don't, I don't need to get political on one side or the other. I don't, I don't care what you, what you believe as long as your beliefs are well-founded and you're not just following the red team or the blue team blindly. Well, how do you help people in the business world get off the numbers? You know, uh, quit, quit doing the clicker and the clicker and the clicker because storytelling is me stepping out connecting with the audience, taking them on that mental, emotional roller coaster you were talking about, and then I have them in the palm of my hand. How do you help them raise the story, get to the person, and pull them in deeper and have it stick? Because the stickiness is what really matters now. Well, it comes with some of the techniques that you're used to when you craft a speech. Maybe you open with some questions, provocative questions that immediately ask the audience, how do you feel about this? Imagine if you could do that and you bring them into a story, right? Because all of a sudden they are, you're asking them to contemplate their relationship to a certain narrative. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's engagement. Now you can give numbers, but those numbers have to be meaningful numbers. I can go blah, blah, blah about education in the United States. When I say, did you know that one in five people in the United States read below a fifth grade level? That's a startling statistic. Yeah. It's more than just data because you're thinking, wow, these, these are the people who are, 
you know, calculating my price at the checkout counter. These these are the people who my children are meeting and interacting with. These are the and people running the country. <laughs> these are the people voting. And I mean, there's, there's, there, you know, statistics can be very powerful. Or maybe I can just take them into that story that doesn't seem relevant at first. Like, what, why is this guy talking about dodging cruise ships on a rough night and freighters? And wh what's that all about? It's exciting, but, and then boom, wait a second. It's about you. You're out there on that metaphorical ocean, dodging those big obstacles and you have to navigate. You have to learn to trust your compass when the navigational equipment is confusing, you have to learn lessons. Like sometimes you have to take sail down when you're, you know, to go faster, <laughs> not up. There's all of these, right? So I know I'm blending things and not directly answering your question, but <laughs> how do you, how do you get people to become more persuasive and more influential? You, teach them these basic principles of what to say, how to say it, and why they'll buy it. How do you do all this without sounding like you're just a sales pitch person? I mean, that's the other flip side on it. There are those that have the silver tongue. They know they can send you, sell you anything. Paint a board. I can sell this board to you, Dave. I know you need this board. <laughs> so, it, I, I love that. I love that question because uh, I'm probably one of the most sales averse people you've ever met. And as soon as I feel like you're selling to me, there's this wall that goes up. It's like, come on, do you think I'm stupid? And I think there's this term that's come to light lately. It's servant leadership. And what you do if you want to sell you offer people value with the knowledge that some of them are going to say, thanks, that was great. And you're never going to see them again. And some of them are not going to understand the value of what you're offering. But some of them, the right ones are going to say, wow, I never thought about storytelling or speaking or leadership or employee retention or whatever that way. And I'd like some more of that. How do we, how do we, how do I engage you? How do we get together? And if instead of saying, click my buy button, which we get these emails, hi, you look like you be a perfect candidate for franchise ownership. Yeah, click the button. <laughs> what, what gave you that idea? The fact that I love running my businesses. I mean, anyway, so we get that. Or do you need app development? Like these kind of sawed off shotgun yeah. marketing techniques, mm -hmm. but and, and even lately, the ones where someone says, why don't you book a, a strategy call at no cost? And like, I get it. It's it's hard not to sound salesy, yeah. but I mean, I do strategy calls and I make a promise. I'm not, I promise not to sell you anything unless you ask me about a program I offer. I'm there to serve the people who I would like to become my customers and you give enough so that people are, are interested in reciprocity. That's also a natural impulse. So what do you do with the call to action side? Because storytelling, you do want them to act. You want, I mean, say it, share it, sell it. That's what the title of the show was here today. So there is a call to action, but the storyteller threads a fine line, don't they, between becoming the pushy seller, smash the button, buy it now. So how do you land the plane with a call to action that doesn't make it sound like I just hooked a fish. I'm reeling you in now. <laughs> well, there are a number of ways. One is to say, okay, you've been to my free program. Are you interested in exploring more? Here's the link. Sign up for the class or uh, jump on a call with me. Now, if they're interested in exploring more, you've already given them value. Now, what I don't like to do, and I've seen too many people do this, is like, Okay, you've experienced this. Now, are you going to stop here? Are you going to make an investment in your future? Because for a limited time only, this class is normally, you know, $99.97. And today you can get it for only $49.97. But don't wait because our price is going like that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Drives me crazy because, first of all, we already know that there's $5,000 in artificial value <laughs> built into that offer to begin with. 
and and there are the you know the offer stacking techniques. Well, you not only get the twenty nine ninety seven class, but you get you get the, the book not, not available <laughs> not available in any store. It's normally two hundred and ninety seven dollars, but it's included. And you get the calls, and you get no 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 no. This is a three hundred ninety six thousand dollar value. Yours for only nine ninety seven. But wait, there's more. You know, we, we <laughs> operators are standing by to take your call. <laughs> but but that's what people are fearing more than anything else now. They 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 are fearing that whole snake pit that you just described so well. But again, we have to say it. We have to state what we're doing, how we're doing it, why it will value you. You need to share it in a way that does attract people. But that selling point, I think, is where it gets sticky. Well, people will check out when you turn the sales pit person. You've lost that personal connection. Yeah, and I think you can't go into the sales pitch, but you can also, for example, if a, there's a workshop, a free workshop I give, and I tell people at the end of this workshop, I'm going to make an offer. It's going to take me about 15 seconds. And if you're interested, great. And if you're not, I don't believe in being a pushy salesperson. Mm -hmm. And during that workshop and being transparent, I give everything I can to the people who attend. And I hope that they're going to want more. And if they do, great. And if they don't, they're not a good fit. And I think you can be, I don't think there's any problem in selling. We all have to sell to make a living. Anybody who's put a child to bed is selling. Anyone who's tried to get the dog to get into the bathtub is selling. Been on a date, asked somebody <laughs> to, to marry you, asked for a raise. or We're all selling every day. There's no shame in selling. It's about pressuring people or, or making people feel bad or you know, so uh, why why is it important to learn the art of storytelling in this business world today why what what would you tell a room of a thousand executives major corporations and they're saying why the heck do i need to learn how to storytell i got a good product because the good product is cost of entry so what? If you don't have a good product, you shouldn't even be in business. But there are a lot of people out there who don't know about your product or don't understand what's superior about it or how it's relevant to them. And honestly, those people should know about it because that product or that service can make their life easier. It can save them time, stress, or money. So get that message in front of them. But if you annoy them, <laughs> they're going to lose interest in the product. And, and I look at the billions of dollars that are spent on advertising every year. Look at that and figure out what percentage of those ads are annoying or irrelevant. 90, 95 percent? Yes. So how much money gets wasted on ineffective advertising every year? And that's just advertising. So let me go back to the beginning when I asked you a lot of your stories came from those early years of sitting around hearing the other sailors. You've slept near a volcano. You, you've done the adventure. How do we encourage the executives, the power brokers, the sellers to go get out of the office and go live an adventure? So it does connect to the product, <laughs> the service, the well, thing. Look, how, how? I mean, I still go sailing on weekends. I've got a 50 year old sailboat that somebody gave me that a friend and I fixed up. We put an electric motor in it, cleaned it up, and we're out on Biscayne Bay almost every weekend. But you don't need a sailboat or a natural setting to do that. Show me four people working in adjacent cubicles. If you could record the messages that go over those walls, the jokes and the games and the, the, the tapping language, you could write a book on that stuff. Anybody who's been in a relationship has stories. Anybody who's had a pet has stories. And I think that, yes, get out into the world and uh, you know, take a safari. Go, go down to the Dominican Republic and swim with the humpback whales. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to get in the water and look a humpback in the, in the, uh, in the eye. A friend of mine has a business, Conscious Breath Adventures, and that's what he does. He takes people to swim with the whales. There, I mean, go out and have those adventures, but walk around the block. Pay attention to what your kids are interested in and try to figure that out and relate to it. 
adventure stories are everywhere and just turn on your story radar and find stuff that you can use go on a story hunt every day and if it can happen in traffic it can happen in your office just turn your story radar on and figure out yeah what's going on that is a metaphor or something that's meaningful or something i'd want to share okay story hunt that boom I haven't talked about it. i think it's like a great idea how do you help someone learn the story hunt? because look a lot of people don't know how to go find the story yes it's happening all around them but a story hunt is intentional it sounds like and it sounds like it's a lot of fun yeah well i think we do it all the time without realizing it like what if you what if you either go by yourself go, go for a hike in the woods by yourself or go with a friend if that's scary for you uh go out and just do something new try a new restaurant and sometimes again we coming back around sometimes it's the when things don't go right that's the best stories tell your story of the boss from hell or the date from hell or the camping trip i mean the I camping got those stories and they yeah, were <laughs> we all we all have those or that that amazing dog that you had who you swore was a little buddha in a dog suit who was so wise and 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 how blessed you felt to have spent part of your life living with and caring for that animal who who knew so much or look around you go to the beach talk to somebody new challenge yourself go up to a stranger and introduce yourself tell them i'm on a story hunt and if you're willing to indulge someone who's maybe a little bit crazy but not creepy i challenge you to have a 15 minute conversation with me what do you have to lose they're going to reject you god collect the rejections there's a story dave bricker you've been uh, marvelous again but we do have a, a free gift dave we, we have a free gift <laughs> as opposed to the kind that you pay for yes a free gift <laughs> tell us a little bit about what this story sailing the little booklet you have here for us this is a, a short book it's easy to read and it talks about the story sailing model the four elements of story and it covers some of the common storytelling mistakes that people make like the data dump story and the poor me the victim story and it, it's just a, a guide to storytelling for speakers, trainers, and coaches, but I think it's applicable to almost any business person. So grab your phone, hit the QR code, download the PDF, and it's yours. Absolutely free, free, free. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> some assembly required. Batteries not included. All models are 18 years or older. May cause nausea, dizziness, or vomiting. <laughs> Dave, how else are going to get in touch with you? What's the best way to follow up with the sailing speaker coach? I've got storysailing.com. And if uh, you can't remember that one, davebricker.com goes to the same place. Dave Bricker, great to have you here. Great tips once again. Remember, follow up with Dave Bricker and learn more about how you can tell these amazing stories, elevate you and your brand, and get greater results. Dave Bricker, great to have you here with us today. Rich, so good to see you again. Let's do this again definitely and maybe i'll go sailing and have some great stories to come your way as well <laughs> hey we want to do thank our uh, sponsors autovito studios of course autovito will help help you with your podcast take your content maybe turn it into an audio book and help you get it out to the market faster learn more about autovito studios at autovita.com and we do want to thank our new partner here at rack to state studio suspiciously convenient productions they are a movie tv production company based out of Can Canada. If you want to learn more about them, contact me, rich at richbontrigger.net. We'll hook you up. Get more and more, we are producing our own production. We're creating our own media, TV shows, and much, much more. We'll get you in touch with the right people to help you do that. That's going to do it for today. I'm the Trigger Rich Bontrigger. We'll be back again next week for another episode of Rock the Stage Show. And again, we are now on Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, streaming to give you the best content possible with amazing interviews, guests, celebrities, and like today, storytelling tips and tricks to help you shine brighter. 